So we are at the it's a big antique mall, really close to my office. And uh, I wanted to do this for a long time. Basically, kind of like the old concept I've done at Walmart, Fast Pro, Academy, come and find cool stuff, but I can't put together a whole carry here. I'm gonna try, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So instead, the idea I've had for a long time is come in here and just try to find cool old EDC stuff. So old pocket knives, watches, lighters, old tools like that that people would have carried back in the day. Just see what we can find. I know there's stuff here, but this place is enormous. I mean, look at it. This is just one of the many, many, many rooms and uh, it's like a maze, but I'm gonna go through here and see what we can find and then I'll show you guys what we find, I guess. Dude, that feels so good. Yeah. I just couldn't stomach 700 for that couch. 300 for this, maybe, but man, it feels so good. These are like old theater chairs or something. I don't, I don't know, what is this from? They're numbered. 126, 124. That's also very cool. I like old things. Can't carry that, let's go on. <laughs> Dickle whiskey and like this old, that's interesting. 27 years of stubbornness. <laughs> I do know of a couple booths in this place that should have some good stuff. There's one right over here. I spend way too much time here, by the way. Holy crap, that is really cool. $700. So this guy always has older knives. What is that? Like a two-sided razor or something? Straight razor? There's another straight razor. Oh, we got to get that. Like an old utility knife. That's cool. Here's that old craftsman. Looks like a buck 110. What is that brand? Camelus Yellow Jacket. We're probably gonna buy a couple of these. These are cool. I really like that. You can't probably can't see it. There's a box cutter back there. It says Omega on it. What does he got? This this is always a cool booth. Like look at this old axe. Sixty eight dollars, but I mean this thing is. That's sick. There's one too. Or two sided. Mess somebody up with that thing. 48 bucks. That thing could still be put to use. Put an edge on it. I might come back and buy it. I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna hold this. All these old lanterns. I love this booth. Vintage lures. Just gotta look through because it's kind of just all thrown in here. But here's a really old vintage bale knife. There's two of them actually. That one looks like a bullet. See it down there? Yep. I'm actually not sure if that one's a knife. Here's an old knife, but I don't know what it is. Case knife. It's an old case lockback. Nothing too special. That looks like it's an old cigar holder. Well, that'd have to be a very specific. Maybe that's not. What is that? $105? You have to have a very specific size. Is that an old flask? That's an old flask. We're definitely getting that. There's an old uh, tree brand, which is now better known as Boker. And here's a whole bunch of knives right here. It looks mostly like junk. A lot of the stuff that you see in this booth is like old company knives that people would get for like anniversary gifts or whatever. See this, this one, like the more you stand here, the more you see there's a old uh, pilot wings. So I'm an idiot. You guys know. So here's another flask. It's a powder flask, not a, not a flask. It's a powder flask. Here's just some standard turnbuckles. Not even like special in any, <laughs> some turnbuckles. <laughs> there's an old vintage flashlight. Oh. 
seven dollars and ninety five cents. Hail light H A E O banner. There's no bulb. <laughs> yeah, buck one oh one. Here's a vintage. I can't even see the brand. <laughs> Vintage knife, Pakistan, twenty-two dollars. Buck one hundred one hunting knife, forty-five. Which one do you think I'm buying? The Packy blade. <laughs> I want to find a watch. I don't think I'm going to. Especially not something that's of actual value because they wouldn't put it here. They'd put it somewhere that it would sell. Can you see it in there? Utensil knife. We're for sure buying that. So the, th the thing about this place is, yes, some things are overpriced. A lot of things are. Some people are very proud of what they bring in here and it's not worth it. Like, what do you think this cafe sign is? It's very cool. What do you think the cafe sign goes for? Okay, what I would pay for it is about two. It's a big sign. Started at $12,000. They have marked it down to 9,900 or best offer. Here's an old pull through knife sharpener, Sharpie Junior, $4. I'm getting that vintage mini tools, mini hammer and a mini wrench. So this is, this is exactly why I come here. Um, new cast irons suck for the most part. This is an old vintage one and it's been used. But the thing is, I mean, it's $33, but you can't buy a cast iron like this anymore. So you can come here, spend about what you'd spend on a new one, and it's made the right way. Just like that axe. That axe could be 10 years old, it could be 50 years old, I don't know, but it's probably made better than most $40 axes that you get today. Now you could spend $200 on an axe and get something equivalent, but like, that's why I come here. Old shit used to be really good. Hey, I have a whole bunch of other stuff, a bunch of knives, yeah and the axe. It was really cool, but I just... If I knew what size cigars that was, I'd, I'd probably get it, because that's cool, but I don't think I'm gonna... All right. Yeah. This axe is pretty damn cool. I'm not gonna lie. I took it home last night, and you can probably see here, I sharpened it, put an edge back on it. Uh, just 30 degrees aside. And I used it to split some wood. This is great. This is a good pickup. Even if you guys think I'm an idiot for buying an unmarked, unknown axe. I don't even know how old this is. There's only one marking on it. It says TG right here. Um, I think I'm happy with it. Even if it becomes a bum axe, it's a really good looking axe. And it's good for like props and sets and stuff. Which is something I have to think about that most people other, like most other people don't. I have props and stuff I need. So I like stuff that looks old and worn. Looks really good for photos and this, that red head looked especially good. So I'm gonna use it, but it might also be a prop. So the rest of the stuff that we picked up, um, if you can see here, $224. Yeah, I spent too much. That's usually the case when I do these videos. Um, but we got some pretty interesting things. I did feel like, it wasn't quite what I expected. I definitely wish we'd been able to find like an old Zippo or something, but we found some pretty cool stuff. So let's let's go through some of this. But let's start with this right here. This is the first thing I really saw. This says Omega Pocket Knife. And look at this. This is a tiny utility knife. That's a mini utility blade, uh, just like the one I talked about that was in like the key bar. Same thing, you can get these or something like this that's folding from uh, like Harbor Freight. I think I might have one actually. So about the same size, definitely the same blade size. It at least appears so. Um, but yeah, that was cool. I don't know what I paid for that Omega knife. Uh, this is $12. That's cool. Like this is something that somebody would have had on their keychain or in their pocket 30, 40, 50 years ago. That to me is cool. That's why I like going across the street and looking at stuff. This tells you that these little utility knives pocket sized have been a thing for much, much, much longer than EDC has. That's probably my favorite pickup. And also, if I'm gonna be honest, I might carry this thing. I might put a new blade in this and carry it, as long as it fits. Do you wanna see if it fits? Should we? I'll have my screwdriver, big guy. 
Thank you, big eye. Always coming in clutch. Watch, this thing's going to be like five years old. <laughs> Just made to look vintage. Yeah. There you go. You got a new blade and our Omega pocket knife. So next, let's talk about this. This, uh, I think, we can use this to cut it open. This says Little Sharpie Junior Knife Sharpener. Um, this is an old, I don't know how old, pull-through knife sharpener. Obviously not really an EDC item, but you can see some things haven't really changed a whole lot. This looks a lot like that work sharp pull through that they came out with a while back. It says it's got a patent number, does not have a year. It's just like cast steel or something. Obviously I would not use this on my knives, but I think that's cool. That's something that I'm gonna put like in my set somewhere. Cause it's just, it's a piece of history, old school, cool, you know, not the best sharpener in the world, but this is, is a cool find. I barely saw it. It was like hanging around the backside of this little spinning display. And I, I barely saw it. I just saw, I thought it was an E at first. And like some, I don't know, but pull through sharpener. This is another one that was just kind of odd and maybe a little fringe for technically EDC, but maybe not, maybe not. Maybe back in the day, more people carried pencils instead of pens. So this is a old, very old, I don't even know how old, German-made brass pencil sharpener with a leather case. I thought that was pretty cool though, like just this tiny little pencil sharpener with a, with a leather case, like, I don't know, it was just a couple bucks, figured why not. This one I picked up just because it was like last minute and I, I didn't really have many knives. This says rust, hmm, can't really, Edmonton Examiner, and then on the blade it says Rost, Rost Fry, Rost Free. It's got wood handles. It's like a company thing. I don't, I don't know. Um, definitely looks like one of those gifts you would get for being with a company for a while or some promotional item. But the reason I picked it up is because I don't know what this is. It looks like a divot tool or something for golf. But then you've also got this. I have no idea what that is either. If anybody knows what this is, uh, let me know in the comments down below. This is like a, obviously some sort of like knockoff Swiss army. Um, and then you've got this too. Here, let me put these down. Like, what is this? It's not a screwdriver. It's not an awl. It's rounded. And it's got a flat spot. I picked this up because it's really strange, right? Like I've never seen these tools on what is like a Swiss Army knockoff. We'll call it a knockoff, but you know what I mean? So if anybody knows what these tools are for, let me know. I'd really want to know. Here is one, um, Camelus. It's a brand you guys probably know well. Old school knife. This is a cool knife. It's very dull, but it's in great condition. I don't know how old it is. It just says Camelus, New York, USA, 717. That's all it says. I love the yellow scales. It looks like bronze or brass bolsters. They're kind of silvery. Maybe they're just patinaed. I'm not sure what material that is, but I, I like this knife. It's really cool. Old two-blader, and it's solid. I mean, this thing... It's a little bit of blade play, but not much at all. This thing, I don't know how old this is. This, this, this is one knife that could be 20 years old. It could be 50 years old. I, I don't really know. I don't know a ton of history about Camelus, but they, these old slip joints like this are just, they're not quite the same anymore. It kind of goes back to what I was saying about the cast iron and the ax. Like, yes, you can get a great cast iron today, but you have to spend a lot more for it. These, knives which were much much cheaper were made much better than the cheaper knives are today and that only holds true for some things i'm talking like right now specifically in regards to slip joints cheap slip joints aren't made exceptionally well um, if you want a good one you're gonna have to spend a few hundred dollars so i don't know um i don't know what blade steel they used to use on stuff like this but it just always to me feels like they were made so much better at a lower price point now your lower price point stuff is like thrown together, slapped together. But I picked that up because it's cool. Looks old school and uh, 
I don't know if Camelus is still USA made. I would imagine they um, are not anymore. So when exactly did they stop making USA stuff or do they still? I don't know. That's why I picked it up. Just to remind myself to look into stuff like this. History of that is cool to me. Right, I also picked this up. Uh, this says Gaedelius? Gaedelus? I don't know. Uh, but it's a pipe lighter, which is cool. I started smoking pipes recently. Um, and it says pipe lighter somewhere on it, or at least it did on the tag, but that's cool. And it keeps your hand away from the flame. That's pretty neat. If you ask me, I don't know much about it, but I thought it was cool. Just an older lighter butane lighter. Let's see if it says anything. It'd be cool to see if we can get some butane in here. Uh, Marumen Tokyo Halley VS. And the, uh, the rest were just so small, I can't see it. Made in Japan. I don't, I don't know. I just thought that was cool. Very small, pocketable pipe lighter. And here's another thing I have, like, no information on. I'm guessing this is, like, an old flask. I don't know what material it's made out of. It says GW Solberg AB. We're going to Google this one. OY. That's what the other loaders are. OY. So, oi, G.W. Solberg. This is all in a different language. Same thing. I don't know anything about it, but uh, oil can bottle. It's not a flask. Rifle oil can bottle. I thought it would be kind of small for a flask, but that's still cool. Um, there were other flasks that I thought were flasks and they were powder flasks. So uh, this is another one. I was looking for like a pen or something that we could uh, show from back in the day. This is just a company pen from um, Union Central Life Insurance Company in Charlotte, which is also kind of cool, just local history. Um, it's got a calendar on it, but it's a mechanical pencil. So you twist the back and the, the lead comes through. I had some pencils like this in high school. Um, there went the lead. Okay. Is there more? Nope, it's out. That was it. <laughs> but I, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, just because, you know, some things don't change a whole lot. But I don't know. I, I wanted a nice old pen, like an old Parker or an old, old cross pen or something like that. But there weren't any. So I grabbed this on the way out. It was just a couple bucks. Figured it'd be... Cool to just show something older that somebody would have carried back in the day. This would have been 1942. So this pen is 80 years old. 80 year old pen. That's crazy, isn't it? It's hard to believe. And then the coolest thing, one of the coolest things I found is this uh, stainless camping knife. It's pretty old. Some of these tools are really loose like that. There's no spring to this anymore. None. It just kind of flops around. Um, but you've got this. I don't even know who makes it. I haven't seen a brand. I haven't opened it up. I didn't look that close because I just thought it was cool regardless. It does not appear to have a brand. All it says is Japan. That's all it says. And it is made pretty crudely too. This thing is very old. You can see how cheap the scales are. They're like plastic and like not real jigged. <laughs> They're molded. They don't line up. Like this thing is made very poorly. But look at these pins. Look at the, the, the way that the liner was made is it folded over and then they hammered it down. So it's made really, really poorly. But it's still pretty cool. Ah, anyway, you've got this nice big bale over here. Uh, a nice big knife on it. And then, of course, you have a full-sized spoon, like freaking kitchen spoon cut up and put on a pocket knife. <laughs> Same with the fork. This fork is huge. You could easily eat very comfortably with this. Um, all it says on any of this stuff is stainless steel. You've got a giant can opener and bottle opener. Um, here's a saw. The knife again. I'm going to guess scissors. Yes, yeah, some weird looking scissors that the spring is no longer working on. And then what is this? I'm guessing a kind of knife, but 
chisel grind. Here is your reamer and your awl, which is interesting to have those as separate tools. Usually you see the reamer and awl together, but not on this one. A corkscrew and a file. That file is like very, very loose in there. Yeah, this thing is made extremely crudely, but I still think it's cool. I mean, come on, look at this. I mean, come on, look at that. That's cool, but that's it. That's all I picked up. It's not like exactly what I intended to pick up when I went into the, the antique store. This is definitely the coolest and most practical thing that I found for just $6 or $10 or whatever it was. Um, something that I would actually use today. I think it's still very, very cool, very practical. Um, I'm sure you can probably find a company making a mini one like this right here, but I think I want to do this again and just see if I can actually hit on a better place, like a better antique mall. There are some others around. I'm not going to do this again anytime soon, but um, yeah, it was still a lot of fun. This right here is probably the best pickup from the whole trip. I mean, this is the best like EDC related thing, but this ax is really cool in my opinion. Um, I used it to chop wood last night works amazingly after I put an edge on it. Um, and that cast iron pan, once I re-season that thing, it's going to be amazing. So definitely not a strikeout, but also not what I was expecting. I, I thought we'd find a Zippo for sure, like a higher end pen. Like they usually have some really nice stuff over there, but there's always recurring or re like revolving inventory. So you never really know what you're going to get when you go there, but there you have it. Some old school, cool, old school like 80 year old edc gear that's pretty cool in my opinion so let me know what you thought about this and whether you think i should do it again and uh where else i should go i think we're gonna do cabela's sometime soon and then who knows we'll, we'll put together some full carries but this vintage stuff always intrigues me like this little pipe lighter i thought that was really neat but anyway that's it for now thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed it um, hit the links in the description down below if you want to see what I'm carrying, what gear we're using for these videos. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash best MBDC if you want to support what I'm doing here. But again, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.